It's another month and another great big tech and gadget unboxing haul. So let's get these open and find out what I've been sent this past month. Welcome back to another episode of Steve's Reviews Unboxing. Before we begin, Switchbot have asked to sponsor this episode and share a message with you guys about their incredible discounts coming up over Amazon Prime Day. Now, for those unfamiliar with SwitchBot, they make some of the most ingenious smart home tech that turns very dumb things into very, very smart things, such as robot fingers that can control and activate manual switches, or magic curtain shutters that are powered by the sun. Now, going back to discounts, for starters, they're taking up to 40% off a bunch of their products on their website from the 7th of July, and then even more discounts over on Amazon for Prime Day on the 12th and 13th. Next, for anyone who buys a SwitchBot product on either of the website or Amazon between the 7th and 13th of July, will automatically be enrolled to win one of 50 iPhone 14s that SwitchBot will be giving away the moment that launches. And lastly, they're giving me a code to share with you guys to get 35% off anything on the website that isn't already discounted. So you're bound to find something worthwhile during this discounted period. And if you haven't tried anything from SwitchBot, now is a perfect opportunity to give them a go so go and check the links and the code in the description i've been using different switchbot items in my smart home for quite some time in fact hold on two seconds i've got this here this is their air quality monitor but they're really cool go and check them out in the description and then let me know what you think Last month we had some incredible stuff but we also had some very weird stuff and that, that thing that we should never ever mention again and definitely isn't still on my toilet. If you do want to see what that was, go and check out the last episode. But let's get started on this month's stuff. Hopefully we won't receive anything quite as weird as that. Second month of using the new knife. I think I spoke too soon. <laughs> what is this? Oh, what? Oh, it's some shoes. Oh, it's like foam. Oh, they stink. They. Oh. Oh God, that is one of the worst smells. They smell like something rotting. I mean, I think that's supposed to be a pair of shoes. They're massive. They're massive. I mean, I'm big, but they're not going to fit me. What the hell is this? This is ridiculous. Oh no, they do fit. How bizarre is that? How do they know my shoe size? How do these people know my shoe size? <laughs> well, they're sort of like Crocs, but they look like they've been made by an alien. Well, they're not tech, so we're gonna move on to something a little bit better. I'm gonna put my uh, slippers back on. Yes, those were rugs. Please don't be something weird. Okay, uh, okay, we're in business. We are in business today. We've got the Tronsmart Trip portable outdoor speaker and the Tronsmart uh, Onyx Ace Pro. I've tried the Onyx Ace, the standard ones. They were very good, I believe, from what I can remember. So let's give these a go and this a go and we'll see what they're like. Useless plastic in your packaging, Tronsmart. If you're listening to me, please stop using. I mean, that's pointless. Literally pointless. Design-wise, they are not too bad. I mean, again, there's only so many ways you can design earbuds these days, but overall, they look okay. These aren't gonna have any charge though, so I am gonna have to put those on charge, and we'll come back to those in a little while. As for this, let's have a listen. Ah, oh, do you know what? The design of this is quite cool. I mean, that's a big logo on the front. It's a very big logo. Not sure if that ticks all the boxes for me. I've never liked things with too big a logo. Feels quite light, much lighter than I anticipated, but the design of it, other than the logo, is really cool. I kind of like this paracord bit that sort of matches the aesthetic on the outside. Let's have a listen though. <laughs> Yeah, it's 
it's not that bad. It's not the best speaker I've ever heard for sure, but it's a small portable speaker. Actually, I quite like it. Is it is it waterproof? Yeah, it's IPX7 waterproof. Stereo pairing as well. I actually think it's quite good. And I quite like the style of this one, actually. Thinking about it a little bit further, you get a lot of these portable speakers that are very round and chunky, and yes, those fit quite nicely in things like bottle sections in your bag, but then it takes up a space for your bottle. This is a bit thinner, it's flatter, so it kind of fits in your bag probably a little bit better. So I quite like that. If you're looking to save space, but have relatively decent sound, then this could be a really good option. So that is the Transmart Trip. Okay, good start if we ignore the weird alien shoes. What's in this one? Okay, we've got the XTU J7 battery powered doorbell camera. Okay, this is interesting from a brand I've never heard before, which could be a good thing, could also be a bad thing. Well, I quite like the design of it, it's pretty sleek. There's nothing massively offensive about it. I like the little hut that it comes with so it shields it a little bit from the rain does that mean that it's not weatherproof doesn't explicitly say that it's weatherproof so it might not be which isn't always the best thing in the world for an outdoor camera oh cool interestingly it's got an indoor chimer with it that's quite cool that it comes with the video doorbell i like that well, it doesn't explicitly say that it's weatherproof, anywhere that I can tell anyway. But let's give it a go anyway and see how it performs. Hello? Anybody home? Anybody at the door? Yeah, do you know what? It's pretty good. I think it's a good alternative to the Ring camera. I think there are some limitations on the software. But overall, it's not too bad. Okay, well, a long, thin one here. Don't know what this could be. I'd be surprised if it's a book or something. What is that? Dear. Iwodo Smart Watches the R3 Pro. Oh, it uses Glory Fit. I haven't seen Glory Fit in years. It was kind of a, a, a almost like a exact copy of uh, Very Fit, if anyone remembers that. Actually, this is pleasantly surprising. It's definitely not the snappiest of all. But the screen seems all right, it's not too bad. I wouldn't be too disappointed if I had this, especially if it's budget, and that would be the real key, whether or not it's budget, and I'll leave all the links in the description below, because as I said, I've just opened all this, so I don't know exactly what prices they are, but you can check that out by checking the links. Next up is another thin one. Another, another thin one. Oh, okay, okay, this is from Comica. In fact, right now, I've got on my camera a Comica mic as a backup mic doing a bit of basic recording. It's pretty good for vlogging, not so good for this distance, but I do use that one quite a lot. This looks like their, well, it's professional audio equipment, basically just looks like their desktop mic. Ooh, no, that's quite an interesting design. It certainly doesn't follow the design rules that have been set out for microphones in the past. I like this. It's a Cardoid condenser mic. We've got a little volume dial here that feels very smooth, that's nice. And it looks to me like this probably lights up when I get it plugged in. A little bass. That is a heavy bass, simple construction. That is awesome. Do you know what? I really like this. That is cool. Great design. Let's get it plugged in, but see how it sounds. Hey, do you know what? This is actually quite interesting. It's obviously an audio visualizer and has different colors to show when I'm peeking. So if I slowly raise my voice, it shows it really peeking there. I do apologize if I've burst anyone's eardrums, but I really do like it. I think it's a great design and it sounds all right. Okay, AutoCast. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, two-in-one wireless adapter. It's designed for iPhone or Android smartphones to use the CarPlay or Android Auto wirelessly on factory car multimedia systems which have built-in wired Apple CarPlay function. That is very cool indeed. If you have something of an older vehicle that has CarPlay or has Android Auto, but you have to plug it in manually, then this is an excellent option if you wanted to do it wirelessly instead. It looks like a really sleek, small little product, AutoCast. 
Wow, that is a genius little item that solves a problem. Cool, I like that. Thing is, I haven't got a car with wired CarPlay to test out, but if you have, there's your solution. Easy Viz eLife. I'm sure I've had one of these before. And the best thing is about this particular model is it has an internal battery, which is something that I always criticize about home security cameras without internal batteries, because if your power goes down, your security goes down. This one isn't the case, but I'm, I'm pretty certain I've tried this. I'm gonna have to have a look back and have a look, but let's just give it a quick go and see how it performs. It's certainly a unique design. It's definitely not among the standard ones. It's very rounded, it's kind of got a turbine effect here. I don't know what purpose of that is, but not bad. Let's have a look. Before I show you a sample of the video, I'll warn you that there is a bit of latency between the audio and the video, and there was also latency between the video and my device that I was viewing it on. This isn't characteristic of EasyViz cameras, so I'm not sure if it's just this particular unit, but all I can say is that if this is the experience, it wasn't the best. Overall, it seems okay. There does seem, however, to be quite a delay between the camera and my phone for some reason. I'm not sure what that might be. But it does get a few extra points for the fact that it uses a battery, which means that if the power goes down, you are always going to have security. So it does get a few extra points and wins back what it loses. Here we have a very beaten up parcel already. So pre-opened by Mr. Postman. Hacky Wind Sports Smart Sunglasses. Oh, these could be right up my street. I love smart glasses. I think they are gonna be the future. And I've been thinking for a long time about doubling down on smart eyewear, kind of refocusing the channel, not exclusively on it, but it's a technology that interests me quite a lot. Things like Google Glass and Snapchat specs, stuff like that. Would you be interested in seeing more content like that? Smart glasses. Because I wouldn't mind doing more. So we've got the Hacky Wind sports sunglasses and the Hacky Wind dedicated replacement lens. So, all right, all right. We've got like a little folding case here. That's quite good design because if it's folding, it means that you can simply do that, and it's now smaller, so if you are going out doing some form of sports, which these are for, that is good, great, that is little bits like that, little bits of design, like that, really do it for me. They've really thought about that. Right, onto, onto the glasses, they feel very... Hmm. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go, look at that. Okay, so they look like they've got kind of some sound little speakers on there. Uh, okay, they've got like two speakers, one on the back of the, the little blade and one in the middle, which is quite interesting. Let's turn these on and try and pair them up and see what happens. Okay, in terms of loudness, they're pretty loud. Not as loud as I'd hope, but it does mean that my ears are open. If I've got wind billowing in my face, is that gonna affect it? Possibly, I don't know. I think maybe the it's gonna reflect it off the glasses. But at the end of the day, I think these are probably better than having headphones in for sure. Because if you are doing things like cycling, you need to be able to hear your surroundings much better than if you had something plugged into your ears. Sound is good though, if a little bit quieter than I anticipated. You can play and pause music. You can also accept calls and speak to people from it. They will last for 200 hours on standby. And uh, if you're playing music, they'll last for three and a half hours. And phone call time, they last for five hours. I actually really like these. I think these are cool. I think they look cool. They feel cool. They're very light. And that is what you want with a pair of sports sunglasses. You don't want it weighing you down. I'm just wondering if these are a different style lens in here blue reflective blue clear well do you know what awesome stuff these are the first smart uh, glasses that i've tried that are dedicated purely to sports and as a first introduction i really like these i think they're really good hacky round of applause that is possibly going to be a contender for one of the best things today so far 
something from Syncwire. We've had some Syncwire stuff in the past. This one is a magnetic wireless charger. All right, okay, we've got little magnetic rings there. That's, again, some phones that might not have magnetic. It looks a bit plasticky, uh, but it looks like it also might have a charging bit below and a charging bit. There we go, look at that. I quite like this actually a lot. It's positionable so you can move it around to wherever you are, twist it however you wish. USB-C, that's a bonus. It is a little bit on the plasticky side, but if you don't mind that, then I think it would be absolutely ideal as a desktop charger. Cool stuff. That one is designed for your AirPods. So you put your phone on there and your AirPods underneath. <laughs> Come on. All right, we've got the Pamu Slide 2. Pamu, they make some pretty good headphones. Uh, although in the past, all to try and have been a little bit mixed on. I think I've been overly impressed. We'll see whether or not the Slide 2 live up to the expectations that all the other people that review them say about them. Design, definitely a bit out there. Not necessarily following the norms. We've got a big Pamu logo here, kind of textured. It's quite nice. Doesn't do anything in particular though, does it? Uh, opening it looks a bit weird. How do I open it? Oh, no, it does. Look at that. Oh, Pamu slide. Look at that. Actually, that, that I imagine might break after a while. It feels a little bit plasticky, but is very addictive. So I'll probably want to do that quite a bit. We're a bit of an audio month this month, aren't we? They're really unusual. They must go like opposite to how you'd think they'd go. Oh, that's weird, look. They sort of sit downwards, that's a bit odd. They're okay, they're not bad. They're not bad, they're not bad. They are lacking a little bit in the base. It doesn't have massive amounts of base. The mids are very clear, and I think they're focused very heavily on those mids and getting kind of overall clarity right. But I just feel like there isn't enough bass there. There's not enough warmth, not enough juice in the low tones for me to really enjoy using these. They're not bad, don't get me wrong. I'd probably give them six to seven out of 10. But again, sound preference is always gonna be different for everyone. For me, I'd give them a six, seven out of 10. I'd say six out of 10 rather than seven out of 10. Not bad, but could do with a bit of work. Joy Room 1, make choice, be simple. I don't want to be simple. I don't even know what it is though. Model JRCL05. Oh, okay. this is really peculiar. Hey, I, I, I don't, is that meant to be a... So that goes into your car lighter and it gives you access to USB, two USB slots and one USB-C slot. And this then extends all the way to the back of the car, I would assume, hooks onto what is supposed to be maybe like the, uh, what the, what's the thing in the back of a car? I've been in the back of a car for 20 odd years. The thing that kids shove all the crap in, like old McDonald's and sweets and bogeys and other things. You know the one, the thing in the back of the car and behind the driver's seat. That, I think, is meant to slot onto it. <laughs> and then you've got a USB and a USB-C in there, so obviously the kids can charge their stuff in the back while the adults charge their stuff in the front. I like that, great idea. Really, really, really good idea. We've got the Marvo. Fit light, wired mouse, grip color options. We've got black, gray, clear, green, blue, purple, orange. It's got an RGB backlight with 12 different modes, although there's no information here about it connecting to any existing services like Razer or Yee Lights or anything like that. On first appearances, this appears quite nice. Not necessarily my color, but that's fine. So it's a very, very light cable there. That is kind of what you want the gaming mouse uh it feels simple oh that has got a good glide to it 
you know, why aren't more gaming mouse mats this kind of retro leather? Because that is so smooth. Okay, we've got two buttons on the side here, which do feel a little bit unusual, actually. There looks like there's a replacement shell here. How do you change this? Can you just, oh look, oh, oh God. Okay, so we take this off and then we can change that. Look, that's quite cool. You've got the inside of the mouse there. It's quite small. And then you can change the exterior to fit whatever sort of feel that you're going for. So you've got this kind of design like this. I like that. That's a great, that is such a good idea. What's inside here? Okay, well, ah, right. Okay, so it's the same sort of stuff, but we've got orange and we've got a blue color here. So we've got orange and blue. I really like this. I think this is a great idea. Good design, well implemented. Let's plug it in and see how it looks with that RGB. These are magnetic, so they just right yeah they're magnetic so they literally just kind of pop in they don't click in or anything they just just slot in like that i really like that that's cool might mean that they're gonna fall off possibly but that is a good design i like that that is a bit different oh let's find out what this is this is the G5000 gaming speakers. RGB dynamic backlighting. This seems like a really hefty piece of kit. Let's have a look. These look intense and that's all I'm gonna say. On the back we've got, it looks like we've got USB audio streaming, uh, we've got Bluetooth, we've got auxiliary, optical audio, coaxial, uh whoa, Jesus. Oh. These are very hefty indeed. Okay, so it looks like it comes with all the cables that you're gonna need to get these going. Oh, I like the way these are wrapped-ish. I mean plastic is a bit much. You should just have plastic around the box and then that's all you need. Not each everything individual in plastic, but this kind of fabric. Oh, oh hey, up, look at that. That is industrial. That just looks the bloody hell. It is, it's three millimeter aluminium. I thought that, I didn't, I mean, that is, oh. These are beautiful. These are absolutely beautiful. Oh my God. Oh, I quite like the controls on the top. It's a bit more retro aesthetic. A bit clicky, that's nice. Okay, let's just get these plugged in. I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in for these. USB input. Bit Chinese there. How do I change input? Bluetooth input. Okay, okay. Wow, these things look great. Wow. Look at that. Okay, we've got different modes. I put it in music mode. Let's have a listen to some music. This is gonna blow my face off, I think, because these are massive. is lit up as well with like the word gaming look at this that's enough for now because i think i want to do a full review of these there's probably so much more to test out there's a couple of things i'm a bit concerned with at the moment but i think after further testing who knows those might go away but what i will say straight away is the build quality is phenomenal these are solid absolutely solid aluminium casing the rgb lighting is incredible and the sound 
is phenomenal and it seemed like it held really good clarity right the way up there so i'm really excited to test these out a little bit further let's put them away and i'll come back to those another day mm. right on to the very final parcel and i'm very excited to find out what is inside this before i tell you what my favorite item has been this month but before i do i want to say a massive thanks to all of you guys you are my patrons and i couldn't do studio re reviews without you especially with the bloody cost of living crisis going crazy the fact that you guys are still supporting me means a hell of a lot i cannot tell you how much it means to me it's another month so that means another patreon charity auction and if you want to get your hands on any of this tech super super cheap all you have to do is hit the link in the description below to take you to the patreon video and that will explain a little bit more about the charity auction and what we do over there but it gives you guys a chance of getting some of the tech that you see on this channel super super cheap and we raise a little bit of money for charity doing so as well and also if you join up you can get hold of a stew's reviews limited edition whiskey glass which i've got right here and i'm going to be having myself a glass of whiskey very very soon if you thought that was a green screen you're wrong Please check it out. Please support us over on Patreon. Thank you to everyone who supports us already. Let's move on to the final parcel. Ah, okay, the E Meet Wireless Speakerphone, the Office Core M3. Office Core. <laughs> Hashtag Office Core. Hashtag Office Core. Show me your best Office Core outfits on Twitter, guys. Hashtag Office Core. <laughs> This seems like really quite an interesting device. It's got a very sleek case, very weighty. It appears to be a meeting centralized kind of audio thing. It's got a little wireless dongle in the bottom. That's a neat place to hide it. Here we are. Oh, it's got a big green thing on the bottom. It shows me where the audio is listening from. That's cool. Is it all right? Hiya, mate, you all right? Yeah, you good? Yeah, you're on an episode right now. I'm not. Right. Yeah, say hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm just testing out like a, a meeting thing. Say something. What do you want me to do? I don't know what to say. Just say say your script that I gave you, Sam. Oh, um, in that case, hi, I'm Sam, and, you know, you're listening to Sue's Reviews. <laughs> All while I'm playing uh, Call of Duty. You need to get a job. Right. That is... <laughs> And there we go. Well, that's cool. I like that. That is awesome. Look, listen, if you want a centralized little piece like that to join people in meetings, that is cool. I really like the way it was doing directional audio, showing who was speaking. Overall, I really like that. This is a solid piece of office equipment. But that is everything today. Well, what a month it's been. To be honest, we've had a bit of a smaller month, not as many items here, but I don't know how you found the pacing of today's episode. Obviously, we're trying to dial it in, as you find out in last month's episode. So hopefully you found the pacing quite well and suited to you this month. But today, I'm going to have to give the best of show. I'm going to have to do a joint best of show. Joint best of show, I'm afraid, today. Best of show. G5000 by Edifier. These are so cool. They sound great, look great. Can't wait to test them out. But the other joint winner absolutely has to be these, the Hacky Sports Smart Sunglasses. I think these are great. My first intro to sports smart wear, I like them. They haven't got any kind of heads up display, which is a bit of a shame. I was hoping for a bit more kind of smart functionality in the glasses aspect of it. But as far as these go, they seem well designed and I do like them a lot. And that concludes today's episode. Guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and notification bell if you want to see more episodes of Stu's Reviews, unboxings, or regular. Like I said right at the very beginning, SwitchBot have got all of their offers coming up, so do check them out at the links below. And last of all, if you want to see any of these products, take a look at those links as well. And I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.